Hi, my name is Patrick Ward and I'm from Tampa, Florida in the U.S. and this is my week three assignment for the Introduction to Music Production course. Today I'm going to talk about basic automation within Logic Pro X, so let's begin. Let's start by showing the automation curves within Logic Pro X. Uh, Logic Pro X gives you a number of ways to do that. You can come up here to the uh, Show Automation button and it's also available in the menu through Show Automation Oops. and uh, also through the shortcut key A. Now that we've opened it up, you can see that here on my bass track, uh, I've got some previous automation commands that I've recorded. And each one of these points can be adjusted individually by dragging them along the line. I can also add additional points by clicking on the line. And uh, also by uh, deleting an individual point by clicking on it and uh, hitting the delete key. Now while that fine grain control is important, most often you're going to be controlling automation in real time by adjusting the faders and the pan knobs and, and other settings while you're listening to the playback. To do that, you'll have to choose from one of four different modes that Logic Pro X provides. Now the read mode is essentially a playback mode in that it will not allow you to make automation changes, but it does playback any automation uh, commands that were recorded previously. For instance, in my bass track here, I can play back the automation. And so as you can see, the fader knob changes as the automation commands were changing. Now I can turn automation completely off, and then I can uh, actually pull down my fader knob, essentially removing the bass from the mix. So you can see nothing's being played. And what I can do though is I can go back and turn that automation back on and because I'm in read mode it now is going to play back the automation that I recorded earlier so I haven't really lost anything. The other mode that I might want to use is the touch mode and touch mode is essentially like the read mode in that it does play back previously recorded automation commands but it also allows you to add new automation commands and then bouncing right back to the previous automation commands uh, once you lift off of the lever. So I'm gonna pull it down and as soon as I lift off it, it, pulls, it bounces right back to where the previous automation levels were. And that can be quite useful. However, you may be more interested in using the latch mode. And in latch mode, it is also like the touch uh, mode in that it allows you to play back previously recorded automation and add additional automation commands. But unlike the touch mode, latch mode keeps the lever wherever you leave it. So w once I lift off of the fader knob, for instance, that fader lever is gonna, going to stay exactly where I left it. Uh, so in this case, uh, let's, let's record some automation again. I'm going to pull this lever down, and when I lift off of it, you can see that the lever stays exactly where it was, uh, where I left it. And that can be very useful because then maybe you do want that lever to stay where you want it, and you don't want to have to deal with holding that lever down all the way through your song. The last mode is the right mode. And it acts essentially like the latch mode in that it stay, keeps the lever exactly where you left it and overwrites any previous automation. But in Logic Pro X, it also deletes previously recorded automation information. So it's probably safer to work with the latch and the touch modes when you want to add automation. Um, and what I tend to do is once I've automated a track and got it to where I want it to be, I'll put it right back into read mode so that I don't inadvertently make any automation mistakes in uh, subsequent playbacks. It's important to note that you're not constrained to just automating the volume. If you open up this disclosure triangle, you can see that the pan is often given to you as an additional automation parameter, but you can also add additional parameters, as many as you want, really. And you can adjust, you know, anything from the software instrument to an EQ setting or a compressor. There are so many different parameters that you can adjust, and each one has its own track. So as you can see, automation is a very powerful tool in your tool set. I hope this was informative for you, and thank you for listening.